Hi, welcome back to my Fusion tutorial series. This is lesson two. In this lesson, we're going to cover organizing nodes. Once we start getting into more complex projects, it's easy to let them get out of hand and then it becomes difficult to find a given node and where it's functioning within our project. So these techniques will allow us to organize things and make it much easier to create using Fusion. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll know when the next lesson gets posted to YouTube. As a side note, everything that I'm going to show you works in the free or the paid version of Resolve. Here we have a simple video clip of some oil wells and some text that gets animated on the right side as it moves down the screen like that. It's very simple and this was created using Fusion. If you notice in the lower right portion of the video clip in the timeline, you see that we have the Fusion three star icon indicating that this is a Fusion composition. So with our playhead positioned over our clip here, we're going to move over to the Fusion page. Down in our node editor portion of the screen, we can see we have our nodes and they're off to the left side here. We can see there's a connector here that's going off to some node that's not on the screen. Over on the right side, we have what is called the navigator tool. This tool allows us to see our entire node grid and what portion of our nodes are on the screen with this white outline here. Now, just by clicking inside of that white line, it will realign the nodes to the center of the screen like this. Notice that the navigator went away now because we don't need it. We can see all of our nodes on the screen at once. Now I'm going to put that back over on the left real quick and I can do that by holding down the middle mouse button and dragging and it will move my node tree. So now you can see the navigator with that white line moving across and showing us where our nodes are relative to the node editor portion of the screen. If I come all the way over this way, it goes away automatically. It comes back if we go off the screen with any given node. And this is super helpful as our node tree grows in complexity. In terms of selecting the nodes, we can click outside the nodes and create a lasso, drag and select them with the mouse. Selecting a single node will give it a red outline like this. I can hold down Command on the Mac or Control on Windows and select more than one with the mouse. The additional ones will have a white outline as you can see here. But a single node will always have just the red outline. I can also press Command A on the Mac or Control A on Windows and that will also select all of the nodes in the node editor window. Clicking outside the nodes deselects all of them. Our nodes are pretty small here, so I'm going to zoom in. The way that I zoom in is using the command key on the Mac or control on Windows and the mouse wheel. So scrolling in, I can zoom in and scrolling the other direction, I can zoom out. We'll zoom in to right about here and now I'll use the middle mouse button and drag my tree into the center of the screen. Now, as mentioned in the previous lesson, one of the things we can do here is we can rename nodes. I'll go over that real quick once more just to refresh your memory a little bit. So we select a node that you want to rename and then we press F2. In this instance, I have the media in one node, which I know is the oil well footage. So I'll rename the node to match that. Now, bear in mind, I can't use spaces, so I'll use capital letters to separate the words oil, well, and footage. And now, as you can see, we've renamed that. You can rename any of your nodes, and I highly recommend that you do so in order to quickly be able to determine what a given node is doing. Another element that we have is we can get pretty messy here with our nodes, as you can see. And one of the things we can do is to have Fusion help us out with that. Right mouse clicking in an open area of the node editor grid, we get a context menu and we can see that we have the arrange tools menu. Auto arrange is automatically selected for us. We also have an option down here to line up all tools to grid. Now it's not going to fix all of our crisscrossed connectors that we have right now, but it will line up each of the nodes onto the grid, centering them horizontally, just like that. Now we can see that each of the grid lines 
shows up at the horizontal center point of each node. But again, all of our connectors are still willy-nilly all over the place. Now the next thing we can do is the Arrange Tools feature. We can align to the grid or to the connector lines. And what this will do is it will create a snapping feature when we move a node around. So let's set it to grid real quick. If I move the text node down, we can see that it's now snapping our nodes to our grid squares. We can turn that off and now we'll try the other option which is to snap the connectors. So now it's not going to snap to the grid at all, but as I approach a connection, my connector element will snap once it's perfectly aligned with the other node. This allows us to kind of neaten things up. Fusion has another tool that we can use to help organize our work. Let's say that these two nodes here represent a bunch of nodes. I want to group them together logically to allow me to quickly see that this section of my node graph is carrying out a given function. The tool provided is called Underlay. We can activate it a number of different ways. We can come up to the effects here, go down to tools which we have active right now. I can search and say underlay. Now we have underlay here and I can go ahead and drag this into my node graph if I want. Another way to activate it is with shift space which brings up our tool menu. Here I can type under, we get our underlay and then I can add it from there. Since I had these two nodes selected, the underlay has grouped them together. We can resize the underlay just like so by grabbing the edges of it. If we grab the title bar of the underlay, we can move it around and it brings our nodes with it. Additionally, I can hit F2 with the underlay selected and we can give it a new name. Since I had the tools in here selected with the underlay, it wants to rename those as well, but that's not what I need to do for the moment. I can hold down Command on the Mac or Control on Windows and deselect the nodes with the underlay selected. Now it allows me to separate it out. If I just select it, it will bring them with it like that. Another thing I can do is to hold down Option on the Mac or Alt on Windows and drag it. With nothing selected, I hold down Option on the Mac and Alt on Windows, click and drag and it will separate out our nodes. Holding down Option on the Mac or Alt on Windows on a node with nothing selected, bringing it into our underlay re-adds it back for us. Again, I deselect. Deselecting is key here. Then hold down Option on the Mac or Alt on the Windows, click on the node I want to add, and now it's back into our underlay grouping here. This is very handy for organizing our nodes into logical groups. Each node has a set of parameters that apply specifically to what that node's function is. We adjust these using the inspector over here. So, for example, the text1 node has a set of controls that apply to the text, whereas the transform node has a set of controls that apply specifically to the function of transform. Coming back to text one here, each one of these nodes has a header associated with it up here at the top of the inspector. In this instance, we have text one telling us the name of the currently selected node. If I select transform, that'll change to transform one to let me know that that's the selected node. Coming back to text one, we also have a switch here and the switch allows us to enable or disable the node within the tree. So, if I click on it, it's disabled. You can see the text has vanished from our footage over here. If I click on it again, the text has returned. Also notice on the note itself, when I disable it, it becomes dimmed down so that you can quickly look at the node graph and see which nodes are turned on or off. Another element to notice is that each of the nodes has a color bar at the bottom of the node. This is assigned by Fusion. Fusion attempts to logically assign a color to a given node that applies to its function. So, for example, we have Media In 1, which is my video up here. If I turn that off, we see the video will go away. We have the final result over here. Again, if I turn that off and we go back to the edit page, we get no result. Coming back to Fusion, if I select that and turn it on and then go back to the edit page, we see now we have our final result.
Back on the Fusion page, these two nodes have the same color. They have this light blue, Media In One and Media Out One, because they're directly related. Now, coming down to Text One, if I don't like that orange color, I can come to the drop down here in the header and I can choose any color I like, such as violet or whatever happens to suit my fancy or to fit my organizational paradigm that I've come up with. The next thing over in our list of functions here on our header is the version control. And what this does is it allows us to create a set of changes to a given node and save that as a specific version. Right now I have version one and my version one says the power of oil. As long as that's selected, and I know it's selected because of the name here, I can come up to the versions and click on it and I see I'm allowed to create up to six different versions for a given node. Right now we're on the power of oil. I can click on two to say I want to create a new version. Now I'll change it to say the danger of oil. So now when I come back to one, it's retained that setting of power and version two has retained the danger of oil. Additionally, it'll retain any other settings that I might make down here in the inspector. Any setting to the node will be saved with that given version. Now, in order to get rid of a version, I right mouse click on it and select clear. The next element to show you here in our header is the pin element. What this does is, let's say that I'm using the transform controls, but I want to have them stay in the inspector regardless of what other node might be selected. That's what the pin function does. If we click on the pin, when I go to text, we can see that here's my text controls. Scrolling down, here's the transform controls, and they've been pinned to the inspector. If I go to media out one, there's my transform controls in the inspector again. Same with any of the other nodes. I'll unpin that for right now. The next element is the lock element. Let's go to our text node here. I'll go to version one and we'll click the lock function. I'll come down to here and I cannot change any of these parameters now because they're locked. And in order to change those, I have to click on unlock and now I can change them. The final element up here in our header is the reset. So if I click this, it's going to reset all of the parameters just like that. Be careful by clicking this because it will reset every version you've created in here. All right, that wraps up this lesson. I hope you've learned something. If you liked the video, please click like. That helps other folks on YouTube find it. If you want to know when I've posted lesson three in our Fusion tutorial series, click on the subscribe and then click on the little bell icon to get a notification for when that video goes live. And until the next video, take care.